IT28G here again. We're just going to check our steering uh, pressures. We've got a gauge hooked up here at the uh, load sensing port of the uh, steering pump. And then out of the discharge of the steering pump on the far side, the spot they give us to check the tap, uh, to check the pressure there, if I can get my phone in there, is over on the pressure reducing valve block. And over there I've got the inner pressure transducer installed just below those red wires there. You can see where it's plugged onto the uh, pressure reducing valve supply. So that's where it's going to go, steering pressure is going to go through the pressure reducing valve and become pilot pressure. But upstream of the pressure reducing valve cartridge itself, they give us a tap there for checking our steering output. So we're going to be able to see our load sense for steering coming from the uh, steering hand metering unit that I've got the light magneted to there. And then we're going to be able to see the output pressure from the steering. We'll check our standby situation and then we'll, we'll check our pressure limiting compensator and we'll check our margin while we're steering. So at the pump output, our, we're reading our standby pressure, which is right around 600 PSI. If I go to uh, input two and check our load sense signal, it's zero because we're not steering. But if I uh, move the steering wheel, you see that our steering hand rendering unit is in fact putting out a uh, load sense signal reflecting the load on the steering cylinders and uh, if I wanted to check our pressure limiting compensator I'm going to go back to input one I'm going to steer all the way to the right here I could put the steering lock link in if I don't have room to steer the machine Steering hard over to the right, and it looks like our steering pressure limiting compensator is set around 3240. The rev the engine up. Rev the engine up makes no difference, so we're just looking at our pressure limiting compensator for steering. Not much load on the engine either. Here's some uh, resonance in our hand metering unit, but. Steering to the left now. I can check my uh, maximum pressure steering to the left as well. It should be the same. Working off the same pressure limiting compensator. The reason I'm doing it both ways is just to uh, make sure that we don't have a bad port relief either left or right that would be uh, causing low pressure one way or the other. So steering straight again. Um, now what I want to do is go to delta one minus two, and we'll just read our margin pressure while we steer. And the manual says to do this around half throttle. And while we're steering, read our pressure differential. So while we're steering, looks like our pressure differential is about 580. Stop steering, it goes back to showing us standby minus our zero load sense. But it looks like we had about a 580 uh, margin. We have to be steering when we do that. If we go to a stall, our margin falls basically to zero because our pump output, even though both are at high pressure, there's no difference between them. Our load sense, I'll just hold it, if I can hold it st stalled like that, I'll go uh, info one, reading maximum pressure. Input two, meeting maximum pressure, so our differential between them is zero. And that's typical of a load sense system to see no margin at stall. So that's why we got to have something in motion really to read our margin pressure or our differential. So a 580 psi margin pressure or load sense differential, that's the highest. Uh, margin we've ever seen or ever discussed. Normally we talk about 300 being our differential between load sense signal and pump output. But on this IT28G that is the spec and they just really wanted to make this steering ultra responsive. So um, the IT28F, the predecessor to this machine, had two vein pumps. One vein pump for implements, one vein pump for steering. 
and it was an open center steering control valve. So to make the machine steer uh, responsively, the operator had to rev the engine up, get that vane pump spinning at high RPM, get lots of flow before the steering would respond. So when they went from the F model to the G model, they wanted to make the steering uber responsive. They wanted to make it really uh, fast and snappy. Uh, so they went with a very high pressure differential, 580 uh, margin. Um, and this machine, boy, if you... Uh you haven't got your seatbelt on. You know, it's very, even at low idle, really, you can really get a lot of fast responsiveness out of this steering. A uh, real testament to the center uh, articulation hitch in this machine that uh, for you know, 10,000 plus hours and, and the hitch has never been uh, never been rebuilt or repaired so it's been uh, with all that jerkiness going on in the steering it's done well but that is it that is engineered in that responsiveness and having a uh, 600 psi standby uh, that's perfect for the pilot system because that's again where the oil is going to come from through a pressure reducing valve to become our pilot pressure. So let's have a, uh, we'll have a check of our pilot pressure. So I'm going to go down and move the one gauge from the upstream side of the pressure reducing valve to the downstream side of the pressure reducing valve while we're feeding the pilot to the, uh, the, the two pilot controls in the cab here. One for lift and tilt. This machine's got an optional uh, joystick, a two axis control for lift and tilt. And then it's got a single axis pilot control for auxiliary. Uh, auxiliaries at the front and uh, the pilot again is fed here not from a pilot pump but from a pressure reducing valve downstream of steering so steering could be steering pressure supplying that pressure reducing valve could be 600 then it could be 3000 could be 600 so we're seeing a big pressure range there that pressure reducing valve is going to be busy uh, supplying pilot pressure here uh, with its specified amount so we'll go down and move that gauge before we do that I'm going to have to get rid of all the oil in the accumulator uh, because where I would snap the pressure transducer on to read pilot pressure is on the same side of the check valve as the pilot system accumulator. And the pilot accumulator on this machine is very, very large for what reason I don't know. But I want to exhaust all that oil before I snap that gauge on. So I'll keep cycling this for a bit and then we'll go down and, and install that gauge. 